dream piece. Back it up just a wee bit. Peace is very difficult to achieve. The dream of peace that I have is both one ancient and, one, and very modern as well. I'd like to begin with a melody. Now, in, in Jewish tradition and in Hebrew scripture, every word of scripture has a melody with it. You may not know that. It's right in the Hebrew scripture. Imagine how you would interact with your own sacred documents if you knew every word of it was meant to be sung. Would that affect the way you thought about it? These are the words from prophet Jeremiah, Yermia. Amihi adabra ve'a'ira ve'ishmahu Hine are'ela haznam Ve'lo yuchlu ve'akshiv Hine devar adonai Hayavahem Ve'cherpa lo yachsuvo Ve'et chamat adonai maleti Nileti achil Shifuch al olal b'chutz ve'al Sod b'churim yachdav Ki gam ish im isha yilachidu Zakein im ale yamim Enasabu ateem lachevim Sadot v'nashim Yachtav, ki atet yadi, al yosh ve'aretz ne'um Adonai, ki miktanam v'ad gedolam, kulo botzea batza, u'min aviv ad kohen, kulo ose shaker. They are the ooh, et sheverami al nekava, lemur shalom shalom, the ein shalom. To whom shall I speak and warn that they should listen? See, their ears are stopped up, they can't listen. The word of the eternal God is a disgrace to them. They don't desire it. For that reason, I am filled with an anger that comes from God. I'm weary of containing it, and soon it will pour out upon all, from the babes to the young men, for men and women, and an old one full of days. Their houses shall be turned over, fields and women together. For the hand will be stretched out, God's hand over the inhabitants of the land. From their smallest to their greatest, violence and robbery, everybody deals falsely, even at the upper echelons, the prophet and the priest. They take lightly the healing of my people, and they say, Shalom, Shalom, peace, <coughs> peace, the Ain Shalom, but there is no peace. My dream of peace, in part, is informed by this prophetic tradition. <coughs> Peace in the Jewish tradition is centered on one thing, justice. Rabbi Shimon said 2,000 years ago that the world stands on three things, on justice, on truth, and on peace. As Zacharias said, judge truthfully, let there be a judgment of peace in your gates. And so, as I was thinking of this, Justice. Where is our, our justice today? When we take the needs of the poor and the naked and the hungry as seriously, if not more seriously than our other concerns, there is justice. When we take the healing of the sick, the binding of their wounds as a divine mission, as our purpose for being here, we create justice. We create peace. When we bring about 
healing of the grievances between people through acts of justice, we bring about peace. And there was a song that came to mind for me. I'm not going to do the whole thing, just part of it. Um, little did Peter Tosh know when he was growing up in Jamaica that in his heart he was a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, I, my name is Wayne Tooker, and I represent those who are dedicated to or have faith in or believe in or have been born again from unconditional love. And I had an experience 37 years ago where that happened to me, and I've been waiting for this day. <laughs> and when I came here to this church two and a half years ago, and I saw all the rocking, rocking, rapping Reverend Steve, Cardi Corgi, <laughs> and he said, it's better than we thought. <laughs> I said, that guy knows. And he said to me, why don't you come and play music for these wonderful, incredible people that I know who are all part of the Cape Cod Interfaith Coalition. And I said, yeah. And I said, what are we going to talk about? He said, peace begins with me. And I said, but so does war. <laughs> so does confusion. So does hate. I mean, should, shouldn't we get beyond peace? Beyond? And so my, my Rev, who has, he told me he had a t-shirt like mine that has Bob Marley on one side and a lion on the other side, and the dreadlocks come together in the middle, right? Yes, indeed. Right, my day. So this is a very special moment. And uh, he started right off with those words that were like the ones I said to Reverend Steve that day, but peace is boring, Rev. <laughs> Let's do life. I think we came here to be joyful, to be together and to be happy, to be able to say, I don't worry about that anymore. And just be, and know that you're already equal. So, for me that was uh, a dream come true. And it still is, and we're here together and we're doing this. So my vision of peace is a little bit beyond peace. And it's a little bit beyond equality. Because you're already equal if you knew that. It's a little bit beyond life and liberty. You've got life and you've got freedom if you're allowing yourself to be yourself. It's that third one of the inalienable rights, the pursuit of happiness, which is the one that concerns unconditional love. It wants everyone to be happy. And each one is responsible for that by allowing themselves to die and go to heaven right here before you die. If you allow yourselves to let go of your pretenses and your whatever else it is. <laughs> Unconditional love makes you happy and joyous all the time, and it wants us all to be happy and joyous. So Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy, even Pericles, they started off with this education stuff for everybody. The women were included, and they said, if we educate everybody, we'll have a better world. Education was the big thing. If we have democracy, we'll have a better world. And we've been pushing that since then. Bobby Kennedy pushed it. Sergeant Shriver, who's a white guy right from here, right? He did the Job Corps, the Peace Corps, the war against poverty, the same war we're still doing, right, David? I mean, we've been, we've been on this wave for a long time, but I feel like it's cresting. So I want to close with some, no, not quite close. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Luther King, uh, the day before he died, when he was 
fighting for the sanitation workers of Memphis. By the way, that's what I wanted to be when I grew up, when they asked me in first grade. I said, a garbage collector. So. Mm -hmm. I thought that was nice that he was there that his last night. And what did Martin Luther King say that last night? He said he'd been to the mountaintop. But the most important words, I think, that he said, I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. Martin Luther King was happy. And he said, I'm not worried about anything. Tuning the guitar, nothing. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Martin Luther King happy. So as we go and walk for him today, I'm sure that's a good thing to remember that he's happy and that we're doing this. So I'll close now, literally, with this poem from the, Born from Unconditional Love, which I believe expresses the fulfillment of our human mission. Love. I am the earth. I am warmth. I am the being who will change the world. I have no fear of division or separation. They afford me the possibility to bring things together. To unite that which was separate, I can do this because I am the son daughter. I am the son daughter of those who were separate. My father and my mother find their perfect union in my body, in my mind, and in my soul. I am both of them, and I love them equally with all of my being. I love my father sky and my mother earth. I have no preference. I love them and all things, all things that have been created by them and through them which means I also love myself. I love myself as I love all things, in the same way, no more and no less. I am the servant. I have been created by all. And love. I love. I am human being. I have a dream of peace. I have a dream of a consciousness where we live the truths we know. Many of you know that I work as a transitional ministry uh, specialist. And that's because where better do we want to know how to truly live the principles that our teachers and our way showers and our inspired masters have lived and engaged with us than when those who have been there as our teachers and our leaders have departed from us. And we as a community are looking around going, say, what? What's next? Where are we supposed to do now? They've left us. In that moment, when our leader leaves us, we as a people are called to live the truth that we know. And I get to have the honor and privilege of working in communities when they are in that time of sadness that their teacher has left them, and yet the glorious opportunity to put into practice the truth that we know. Today we have been inspired by leaders and teachers and masters who, from the different faith traditions, have inspired us in a truth that excites us and empowers us. And now, we go forth to live that truth. And so I invite you to move from your outer experience of looking at it outside of yourself and closing your eyes and moving within. 
to breathe. To breathe in the unity of allness, <laughs> of the inness. To breathe in the all-powerful consciousness that everything we seek is not out there but within us. I am the name of the Most High within me, at the core of my very beingness is the most powerful experience of all. And I make a choice. I choose to focus on what is right with the world. I choose to be inspired by the evidence of goodness. I choose to be inspired to work for justice, to live a life of conscious connection with Source. And as I focus my thoughts on love and light and life and peace and the joy of God, I align with that essence. For all that is is not separate from me, and I am not separate from all that is. As I recognize the strength and the power of this connection in my very beingness, I claim the truth and my life is transformed. I breathe it in. I remember at the times of fear and confusion and worry and doubt and debt, I shift my focus and I remember the Lord my God is one and I am one with all that is. And in this moment, I claim that spiritual perfection, that infinite potential. I know that as I take a stand for peace in this moment, I take a stand for love. For unity stands for peace in the presence of conflict. For love in the presence of hatred. For forgiveness in the presence of injury. Unity honors all the many names for God, all the many paths to God, all the many ways to worship God. For there is only one power one presence and one God that loves each of us equally. So we take in this moment an opportunity to live this truth that we know and take as our beacon call to remember to remember when there's conflict, to remember when there's fear, to remember when there's injury. And to urge not only taking a stand for ourselves, but quietly and gently helping others to remember. To turn to God by whatever name that they might know them for the guidance during these challenging times to pursue peace, not war. For this is what honors the God of all of our faith traditions. Unity stands for peace in our lifetime. And I am committed to a path of peace. Breathing it in, 
breathing it out. Breathing it in and breathing it out. So it is and so we let it be. Amen. <laughs> In this moment, we celebrate and we acknowledge that everything is right where it needs to be, and whatever it is that I'm looking for. <laughs>